In Salty, we have try and catch block to catch an error into our smart contract. So let's try to understand how we can create try and catch in Salty smart contract. Now we're going to use the external contract to use try and catch block. We'll come here, we'll create a contract called foo. Inside that, we're going to take an address and we're going to create a constructor. In that, we're going to pass the owner address and here we're going to simply do the check. So we'll say require owner is not equal to the zero address means the owner is not should be the contract it should be the normal wallet added but it should not be the contract and here we're going to display the address in message invalid address that's the first check here we're going to pass this assert to compare and that will say owner is not equal to this means zero address this is not the address we want this is the second check now let's do update the address so whatever the address we are getting, we need to update it to the owner. That's the simple constructor we have written. Let's come here. We'll create a function called my function in that we're going to pass a variable called X. It's a UND type. We'll make it public, pure return, and it's going to return the string. Inside that, we're going to create a required statement and we have to check that X not equal to zero. We want they should provide any number. It should not be equal to zero. Otherwise, we have to throw this error message. Here we're going to do the return. So we want to return that my function was called. That's the only function it does. What it does, it will take a number. If it's zero, then it will throw the error message. But if the it's a valid number, then it will return this string. Let's close that one. Let's come here. Now we're going to create another contract. In that, we're going to test the try and catch block. So this is a simple contract we have written. We have this function. We have the constructor. Now let's create a contract. We'll call bar. Inside that, we're going to take an event. In that, we're going to pass this message. We're going to take another event in that we're going to pass this byte data. Now we're going to take the contract foo and we'll say foo. So in this way, we can easily have the contract which we have defined above. And here we can come here. We can create a constructor, empty constructor. And in that we're going to pass this. This foo contract is used for example of try and catch with external call. Inside that, we're going to call the foo. And this is how we can use it. So we'll say new foo. And we have to pass the message dot sender because that's what it need. It's need the address the per of the person who is calling that. And we're going to make him an honor. So that's the constructor. We are updating our foo honor. We can come here. We'll take this example of try and catch with external calls. In that we're going to try and catch external is equal to zero. And this is the check we're going to do. If it's going to be zero, then we have to simply fail that. And that's what we're going to log it. Here we're going to define try and catch. But if it's provide the valid number, the function we have in the foo, if they provide the valid number, then we want to simply log this text message. We can call the function. We can say try catch external call. In that we're going to pass the UNT public. Inside that we're going to take this try foo. This is how we can define. To use the word try, it's similar to JavaScript. We have in try and catch the same thing we have to do here. Try, then we have to call the contract and that we have the function called my foo and that we have to pass the ID. And in that we're going to return this string result. And here I have defined the variable name. So later I don't need to name it. I can simply pass it. So this is the variable name I have taken string and I'm going to initialize the log, the event. And here we're going to attach the catch block. If anything goes wrong, we have to simply get the error message so internal call failed now we have to do a couple of check first thing we have to check that the contract creation should be not having this zero addresses if we have that one then we have to display all these error messages now let's create the function and that will say try catch new contract and that we have to pass the address and this address should be the valid one it will say public and in that we're going to take this try new that's how we refer our contract and that we have to pass the owner that is we are getting and we have to simply return foo the contract and here we're going to emit the log so foo created and we have to simply catch the error so this is how we can do it we can define the error keyword we have in salty and we can define the string the error message we want to log and simply come here we have to simply we have the and the error and this error can be thrown by using this two method we have revert and required so let's come here we're going to say this event and then we're going to pass the reason and simply come here we have to pass the byte data memory and catch failing assert and then we have to simply event this log error message 
and that's looks pretty fine so this is pretty huge contract hope this makes sense pretty simple all we are doing we are checking for the addresses and doing some transaction into other contract by following general conventions this is the entire contract we have written so this is the entire foo contract and bar contract we have written to test this try and catch Draw the contract here we have the two contract we have to deploy the foo contract and that we have to pass the address of the owner so i'm going to be the owners of the contract so simply pass the in the constructor and click on deploy and the transaction went successful if you see the logs this is the owner which is me and the transaction went successful if you open that you can able to find the owner and here you can call this function this is the function we have created so in that if i provide this zero you can see this is the error message i will get so the transaction got reverted and if you open this log you can able to find the failed transaction decoded this is zero and because of this it's got failed but if i provide the right number if i provide one the transaction will went success if i click on the function here you can see the data got updated and this is what we are returning here so this one is looking fine now let's come here let's create a go on the bar contract and in that we have to simply deploy the contract the contract got deployed and let's have a look what we get three function this is the foo try catch by example so let's come here and this is the first contract we have in that we have to pass the unt when we pass the unt we're going to call this foo function foo dot my so if we come in the foo contract and this is the function we are calling in that we are passing this i and we are having this return so what will happen here so we're going to return the result and we're going to initialize that into our event but if it's right then we're going to initialize this result otherwise it will throw the error so let's do one thing if we provide one the transaction which went successful because here we are checking for one if it's one then it will display the right message let's type for this and the transaction went successful you can see here you can come and here you can see the log we have my function called and this is the message we have here but if i still provide zero here the transaction will, will fail zero and this is the message we'll get back here external call failed and this is what we have explained here this is our failed message we'll got and this is how we catch from this catch block so that makes sense now let's understand this function so here we have this try and catch and here we are going saying that try catch new contract so when in this contract if we pass this address this is the invalid message we will display invalid address because we don't want to have a zero address we don't want to have the zero address so in that what i'm going to do is if i simply grab this entire address and if i call this function if i call the owner you can see the error i will get so the transaction went successful and if i open this one this is the error message i got invalid address and that's what we are logging here if you pipe this one if i copy this i'll get the byte log and i can simply pass it here and i can simply get it if i click on this i will get this error message the transaction went successful and we are catch this reason that why it's got failed and here you can able to see is say that this is the address this is the data and it's not valid the byte log now if i want to catch the data which is in byte format and if i simply copy that one and i'm going to pass this one i'll get the third reason the third error message which is that foo created this is the foo created if i pass this one if i paste here if i click on this the transaction went success and here we can is able to have the message so on the base of this condition you can catch different error you can see we have three blocks first this this and this so this makes sense hope i believe and that's the only thing you have to know if you click on this this is the address of the foo you will get and that's the only thing you have to keep in mind that's the only thing you have to keep in mind so hope this makes sense how to use a try and catch block here you can see here we have tested for three different conditions you can add in any logic and that's how you can define so here we have defined on the base of the contract and we are validating the contract address but you can build any statement like transfer fund or any data or any logic so hope this makes sense if you still have any confusion and doubt rewatch the video and do leave in the comment section that what do you have the problem i'll try to explain that